Hi, it's very cold in Ukraine here and a lot of snow. Um, so, um, so let's start and discuss how Israel was so successful with immunization against COVID. Yeah. Um, so first so of all, you thank start you. and I will be stopping you periodically and asking you questions. Okay. I'll try to share my the screen. Only, the only request which I have to you, as a lot of people in Ukraine, you are... No, no, as a lot of people in Ukraine, not не в наслідок, а як багато людей в Україні, as a lot of people in Ukraine, you are talking too quickly. Okay. I'll do it better So now. please respect the interpreter and speak not as quickly as you usually do. Okay, please uh, allow me to share so my screen. So that we will not lose the important details of what you were doing. So let's start and then I will be stopping you. <laughs> okay, please allow me to share my screen so I'll be able to uh, show my presentation. Katya, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. So please start. Go ahead. Okay, so just let me share my screen. So, okay, here it is. Just a second. No, it's it's not working. No. Okay, I'll start um, only by talking, and then when I'll be able to share the screen, I'll show you uh, the presentation. What I want to do is to just a second. Now we can see the screen and we can see yeah. the presentation on the screen. But it's not the right one, just a second. I have one with some of the headlines in Ukrainian. Here it is. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes, we can. Good. So, Katya, thank you for inviting me. I hope I will be able to um, give a very general picture of what is happening now in Israel. I'll start with the um, level of the disease here in Israel. What we can see is the first wave nearly a year ago, which we thought it's the end of the world, but it was very mild. I'm stopping for the translator. Okay, then we can see the second wave around the starting of October. And then, of course, we can see, we can see uh, the current wave, which was the highest. And as you can see, it was longer for many weeks, longer than the other peaks. Ido, hi, it's Oleg here. So you can feel free to talk without waiting for the interpreter. Can I just move forward? Yes, you can move forward. Uh, just don't speak quickly and move forward without thinking about hearing the translator. Just okay. continue. Uh, Katya, and in Israel, there are four health organizations, health providers, and they are treating, one of us is Maccabi, where I come from, and we are treating 98% of all these patients. We are treating them at home. They are not hospitalized. Okay, now let's talk about the immunization. For now, with the first dose, there were nearly 3.8 million people in Israel with the first dose. And another, or 
part of them already got the second dose as well. It means that Israel already vaccinated nearly 6.3 million people. Sorry, 6.3 million vaccination given, not people. Um, th there were about 3.8 million people who got vaccinated. And it's a lot. The whole total population in Israel is nearly 10 million people. 3 million out of them are kids under the age of 16. And we have another half a million of people who got positive for COVID, so they are not getting the vaccine yet. So out of about 6.5 million people, we are already with 3.8 million who got the vaccination, over 50%. Now, how we do it? Um, what you can see here is we separated totally the places where we are giving the vaccination. We separated it from our clinics. This picture here, it's a place, a basketball court in Tel Aviv. Since there are no any basketball games, we asked to have the foyer, the lobby of the place. And we use it, each place like this is a station with a nurse inside. I will show you it soon by a video. So this compound is like 10 or 13 um, stations, uh, a medium sized one. Here you can see a caravan where we can just move it um, day by day or each time for a few days. We have two stations of vaccinations here. And we also have a mobile unit like a car that drives from a place to place. So we have compounds from ranging from one unit to 25 units, which is the largest one in Israel. 25, sorry, 25 stations of nurse. Okay. Now I'll show you a short video. It was broadcasted in the Wall Street Journal um, website. You may hear my voice, I hope you will. And this is one, this is the compound that I just showed you the picture. It's in Tel Aviv in a basketball court. Take a look at this. The lady starts with using her Maccabi card, then she gets a number for her line. and someone will come and help them and take them to one of the stations. We avoid any um, long lines. We don't want people to be crowded here in the compound. So someone will take her to the place, to one of the stations, and the nurse will, um, will do the vaccination. Now everything is documented. The nurse is documenting the vaccination in a special app. He writes the ID number, date of birth, even the side of the shoulder, if it's right or left. Um, and also the number of the, the small number on the small bottle. So we will know that this guy got it from a certain bottle. So this is how it goes. Um, this is how we vaccinate patients who cannot reach our places. Either we, how they, they are, coming to our places with ambulances and the nurse gets inside the ambulance to vaccinate them. Or if it's possible, they get down from the ambulance, but we wait for them, not in the routine waiting line. Here you can see the prime minister in one of his visits. And this lady or this man and this lady are Holocaust survivors that are now getting the vaccine here in Israel. Here you can see again inside the ambulance. Here you can see it again. Okay, now one of the most important um, parts of the chain is the engagement with the public. 
and we wanted people to schedule the uh, vaccination, not to come like a walk in. We wanted them to know in advance that they have a special day and time to get a vaccination, and it helps us uh, plan the um, the logistics and the supply, of course. So we offering three ways to schedule an appointment. The best way, the easiest way, is digital. You just enter the the app or the desktop, and you schedule an appointment. Immediately, the computer gives you a second appointment 21 days later. We will not wait for the patient to schedule the second meeting. Another option is we send you a text message with an option to like a link to get into our scheduling system. And the last option is just call us by phone and we will arrange the meeting, the appointment for the vaccination. So you can see that 67%, and I must say that now it's even higher, is done either by digital or by automation, by this uh, IVR or text messages. This is just one uh, example that was done like uh, a month ago, 100,000 schedulings was made that day. It's not a high number. It's a regular number. Okay, now once you did your scheduling, you get a text message saying, here is your day for the vaccination. Um, please come at the right time, etc. Few days before the vaccination, you will get a reminder because we really want to avoid people forgetting or want to avoid no-show. And we're offering them that if it's not possible for you to come, please uh, notify us and we will schedule it again. It's very important. So for the first few weeks, we had 1% no-show, which is totally amazing. There are not many, um, many medical services with just 1% no-show. I think that only death is 100%. All the others are much lower. Okay, now we are doing a lot of promotion. We, here it's like, um, here you can see all this side. We encourage the people to put up their photo and to choose what is the reason why I got vaccinated. This one is to guard my family. This one is to help small businesses and small shops because they are closed, locked down. Here, again, it's to protect my family, they're also to protect myself, to get back to life, etc. And it's one way to show my family that I got vaccinated, or my uh, members at work, or my friends. Um, we also provide a lot of information, not just promotion, but also we understand that people are looking for a lot of information. So we provide them, this one is, what will be the side effects of the vaccine? Uh, will it change my genetic, uh, my genetics? Here it's about it's about myth, all the fake news about it. Here is how the vaccination was developed. Um, we give everyone who wants it like a sticker to put here with saying yes to the vaccination, and we are also doing. This one was done a week before starting the vaccinations. We did a live uh, uh, Facebook and hundreds of people entered it and asked questions and our doctors replied. Now, take a look at this one. This one is from uh, today, as you can see. The, uh, one of the municipalities close to Tel Aviv together with Maccabi, we offered Patients from that, that speaks Russian, mainly old patients that speaks Russian, we offer them come to our place to get vaccinated, and the municipality will provide you small boxes of um, like lunch. 
we are sure um, that this is not the only motivator that can help, but for sure this will bring tens or maybe hundreds of people also to get vaccinated. We use the same thing, the same motivator, we used it on the Orthodox Jews in another small town uh, next to Tel Aviv, and it was very helpful. A lot of them came to get uh, special food for Shabbat. So this one is done today. I can let Katya know how it was, uh, what was the effect. But as you can see in Israel, there are a lot of subgroups. There are the former Soviet Union patients. There are uh, the general population. There are uh, people who speak Arabic, either Muslims or Christians. There are people who speak English, French, and we are trying to address every one of them in, in, its, in his language, um, and not just the language, also the, like the, the way of living. It's very important. Okay. I'll show you a few things that we did with the media. Um, first of all, we had a flood, hundreds of media um, from all around the world, media outlets reached us to understand what we are doing here. So we had a lot of Israeli and foreign media. It was, I, I, I'm really, I'm not exaggerating. It was 24 seven for many weeks, um, including weekends, including everything. Really, we didn't have, like there were days that I asked myself, did I have lunch today? I didn't remember even. Um, very constant, very intense. It was hard. And some of, the, some of it we planned, but many of it was unexpected. So a few of the tips that I at least understood. First of all, we need to initiate as much as possible, not to wait for something to happen. We need to do it. Second, we need to have my team, the PR team needs to be wherever there is a media crew. Um, it's very hard, but it's, it, it's a must. Third, usually health systems thinks that the media people are, they are they and we are we, and let's have a barrier. And we need to understand that in such a mega event, we need to work together. We need to find out what they need and try to supply it to them. I want to become the uh, spokesperson that all the media reaches, reaches me. If they need something, they call me because they know I will be able and I will understand what they need. They will not need to struggle with me. It's very important in such mega events. We had a lot of challenges. I'll tell you some of the faults that we did. First of all, on the first, day, I think, um, we gave a full bottle to someone. You know that we have six doses in each bottle, but we, um, we really gave all the bottle to someone and we needed to address the media with it. And what we did is we came out clear. We issued a press release to all the health reporters saying, look, we had a problem. We gave five doses to a person. We are checking that he's good. We sent him to an hospital just for checking. He is feeling very good. The day after this man, he is a pharmacist. He uh, gave some interviews to, to, to show that everything is okay. And this episode just vanished. But if we have tried to um, hide it. Probably we were, uh, someone would have found it and attack us. So it's very important to be as transparent as possible. Second, especially Maccabi had a big problem. All the other health funds vaccinated whoever wants to come. If you're young, above 16, but still young, you can come and get vaccinated. Maccabi followed the instructions of the ministry, which said at the beginning, vaccinate only 
60 years of age and more, then 55, then 50, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Maccabi followed this instruction uh, with no uh, extras. And all the young people in Israel and all the mid-range ages um, didn't like it. They were all around Facebook and uh, uh, Twitter and WhatsApp and all in the media were very much criticizing us. And the main challenge was on, on the shoulders of my team, the media team, and on the shoulders of the nurses who got a lot of uh, yelling at them why does Maccabi doesn't uh, do it? Um, but we said all the time that we have the same policy and we will follow it. And we started adding some messages that you need to understand the importance of what we are doing. Because if we follow the orders now, we will follow it also when you will be sick. And you can trust us, maybe the other funds I don't know what they will do because they don't follow the uh, routine. And it was one day, I don't know what was the, the, the parameter that changed everything. All the media anchors started speaking that it's very annoying what Maccabi is doing, but it's, it is the right thing to do. And you have to have all that. And really all the media did that. Some of it with our encouragement, but it was good. Um, another problem that we have is public gathering restrictions, because once you host the prime minister or the president, or even you want to make some kind of uh, a press conference, you cannot do it because of the uh, gathering restrictions. It's very hard, but uh, we, we followed it as well. And it's not just the PR for Maccabi, we really want to make some influence to call people to come and to schedule an appointment and to believe that our policy is the right one. We wanted to affect uh, the regulators, saying to them, you must now open to 55 or 50. You must uh, criticize the other health funds who are not following your orders, the ministry's order. So part of this messaging was done by us through the media. And the last thing, and it is the most important target audience, it's our staff, because we want to raise their moral all the time. They are working very hard and we wanted them, we wanted them to feel pride being part of the health system and being part of Maccabi. Here is, now of course that we are using as anchors um, when we have good events. This is the uh, president of Israel, and this is my CEO. Um, it is in another basketball arena in Jerusalem. This is the prime minister, this is my CEO, and this is the uh, health minister. He was born in Ukraine, actually, if I remember correctly, um, visiting another compound that we have. This is, as you can see, a lot of media here because the CEO of the, of the ministry is here and my CEO and another chairman of uh, Asuta, the, the hospitals in Israel. And here is an event that I initiated in Maccabi in a very small branch that we have. This is the, when we passed the 2 million in Israel, we picked up um, a, a lady that she, that she works as a kindergarten teacher. Uh, they were allowed to get vaccinated and she is the 2 million vaccinated person in Israel. So you can see the prime minister and the minister of health, my CEO, my chairman, and the, um, the nurse who vaccinated her, which is also born in Ukraine, if I remember correctly. Now, we saw that people are very, very much uh, feeling good with what Maccabi is doing. So part of my tactics with the media was to let my people talk, to let the patient, if, if the media crew wants them, I just told them pick 
any patient that you want and go talk to him. This is a, a Dutch TV. And this, is, this was done in Sky News. Sky News is not a very much, uh, it's not a TV station that supports Israel too much, but I'll let you watch the video. Actually, this is a drive-in compound. You come with your car, you open the window, and uh, the nurse vaccinates you while you are sitting in the car. And then you wait here for 15 minutes and there is a nurse passing between the cars to see that everyone is okay. Take a look at this one. I think this was from one of the beginning uh, days. It's next to a football stadium in the city of Haifa. It's about one hour north to Tel Aviv. So it's great, you sit in your car and you are isolated, no fear of uh, getting What this lady is saying is that I just came and I'm already getting in the compound. And she's a doctor herself, not Maccabi, I think, but she's a doctor herself. So I really let the patient talk as much as possible because uh, they were so satisfied with what we are doing. This is my part, Katya. Now, now you give the orders. Hey. Just a second, I will see myself on the screen with you. Um, uh, so, if you will put in a nutshell, uh, uh, regard the community, not in a nutshell, but in just few points, the um, communication with uh, patients, with potential recipients of the vaccine. Uh, do I understand correct that you are using SMS, correct? Yeah. You are using media because they are watching TV. Mm -hmm. What else? Can you say once again in a few sentences which instruments you are using and how do you see the uh, efficacy, effectiveness of these approaches? So we are using both ways. First of all, the patient can uh, call us. We are passive and just receiving his call. And Can I interrupt you for a second? Is this a special big call center which was organized particularly for this immunization or it was um, something else? Where are they calling actually? We have a very, for routine days, we have one of the largest call center in Israel, but for sure we added hundreds of, um, of people of uh, workers inside this call center and made it much bigger for this event. Mm -hmm. So they call so the us. first step, they are calling you. Yes, but if okay. they are not calling me uh, and we see that uh, after two, three, four days, a patient from the certain risk group didn't call me, I'll start hunting him on the good way. Uh, Ido, I will stop you here again with the question. How do you see that the persons from the certain risk groups are not calling you? Who is analyzing the database to see who called in and who did not? We are using a lot of uh, computerized system that once Katya got her vaccination appointment, she's erased from the list that we need to approach you. So we know that you already have um, a vaccination appointment. You will not get more SMS, just reminders. Mm -hmm. So, what so we... you are more analyzing the data on who got the vaccination, but not who was calling in. No, I know, I know we are analyzing everything. We know that people from the Orthodox um, group is using the telephone channel more than the digital channels because most of them are not allowed to have smartphones. Mm -hmm. So they are not using the digital channels, they are using only telephone channels. So we really want, we really know how to um, 
purify or how to understand each subgroup in each age, in each region in Israel, we know how to differentiate them and to say, with this group, I need to work a bit differently. Now we have a, a big problem with um, former Soviet Union um, immigrants. They are not all immigrants already, of course, there are more than 30 years in Israel, but the old people that came from former Soviet Union are less getting vaccinated than other subgroups in Israel. Why? You should tell me why. <laughs> um, part of it maybe because they don't trust the government or governments at all. Um, part of it is because maybe the Russian speaking media was not as hectic as the Hebrew speaking media. So what we are doing now is trying to find out what will be the best message and the best channel to reach the grandmas and grandpas in the uh, Russian speaking uh, population. So just uh, back, yeah, Katya, getting back to your question, if mm -hmm. Katya is in a risk group and didn't schedule an appointment, we will send you an SMS. We will send you a second SM text message. Then we will send you a recorded message and we will send you an email um, with, with content in Russian or French or Arabic or Hebrew or English, five languages. And if everything is not helping, we will call you. Uh, a person will call you and try to convince you to get uh, vaccinated. And also... And, and this person who will be calling me will be doctor or nurse or just some other person? It will be, the first line, it will be a representative. It, it will not be a doctor or nurse. But when you will come to your doctor just for anything routine, he will see on his computer that you didn't get vaccinated. And he will start talking to you about the importance of the vaccination. And also he will reply your questions about why you are not getting vaccinated. Maybe you are afraid, maybe you are sensitive to penicillin and you want to know if this vaccination has penicillin inside. Mm -hmm. So as you said, they can call in, this is one thing. Then second thing, they will receive a call from a representative if uh, you see that they are not coming to you. And yes. the doctor will talk to them or nurse if they come to the health system for any other reason, correct? Yes. Uh, correct. Anything else? Well, um, what we are doing also is we are now recruiting our staff members who speaks Russian, who came from uh, former Soviet Union, who all, all were born already in Israel, but to parents uh, who came from uh, Soviet Union. And we are asking them to start sending um, messages in their family, like a nurse that speaks Russian. I'm asking her to send messages to her family circle, to her friends and by like, we are attacking the, the, the patient uh, from any side, from every side. Uh, did you buy space on TV or was it given for free by TV channels in this uh, to put any specific um, public health announcements on TV or any kind of advertisement on TV? Uh, there were two channels. One is, of course, paid TV. We didn't get anything for free. But the other one is to send, to make the PR, which is for free. If you convince the reporter to do an article, then it's for free. And we send a lot of our experts and a lot of our senior staff to the TV and radio channels and newspapers. Um, and they are saying all the messages that we want them to say, of course. So you didn't buy uh, the space on TV, or you did? Especially on TV, we did not, but on radio, we did. And um, 
we did a lot of pro promotion in uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Which other social networks you used apart from Facebook? What was strong for the target audience? Instagram, not Instagram. What what did you use? TikTok. We didn't we didn't use Instagram ourselves, but we did found out that a lot of people who got vaccinated are doing a selfie and then putting it on their Instagram. So we encourage them to do it. Uh, you saw it in one of the slides. We encourage them to do it and and add a message. I got vaccinated to help my family. Uh, can you say, probably you said it, but can you say again, uh, what was the results uh, among different target groups and what was um, expected success, unexpected success or no success? Just can you give a little bit of analytics with regard to the groups targeted and how it was going for them? Yeah, I can. Um, okay, I will say it. First of all, the group uh, above 80 years of age, the oldest people in Israel, are more than 92% positive, uh, got, got the vaccination. More than 92%, which is very good. Now, if you get to younger adults, then you get a bit lower rates. Like above 60, we have um, 85, if I remember correctly, 85% who already got vaccinated. And above 50 years of age, we have uh, 72, if I remember correctly. And among healthcare uh, no. workers? I think that... A, Okay, I think that we have around 70 with healthcare workers because many of them are young and the same problem that we have with youngsters who are not in the healthcare system, we see it also with our staff. And, and uh, with regard to healthcare workers, did you start with healthcare workers? Were they the first group to be vaccinated in Israel? Yes. We Did you start day. only with healthcare workers from the hospitals or you targeted all healthcare workers, doesn't matter where they are? All healthcare workers, uh, the first day was dedicated just to them. Uh, and we had a great number of them coming and getting vaccinated. And it's not a problem of um, like, the, there is a variability to come and get vaccinated. I myself, was working too hard and even I was in the compound what we TV crews so I got vaccinated like three weeks after the event had started after the campaign started not in the first day and uh, with the healthcare workers this 30 percent uh, who did not get their vaccine yet are they still thinking they are strongly refusing what do you know about this group I'm sure that most of them will get vaccinated uh, soon. I'm sure that we will reach around 82, 83%. It, the, it will be a bit of a longer tail, but it will happen. And those uh, people who went to vaccinate others in those stations which you showed, those healthcare workers, uh, first of all, nurses, as I can imagine, right? You don't need a doctor in this process in Israel. You don't need a doctor, hopefully. but we had, we had doctors at the first days. We wanted to reassure people that everything is safe. So we, um, we designated one doctor to each compound, but it's not required and it's not needed. And uh, in, the, in the compound, all these healthcare workers who were providing immunization for other people, were they vaccinated themselves priorly or not? Most of them, yes. Most of them, yes. Uh, how do you make sure that uh, people would not contract COVID from each other uh, standing in line for vaccination? Was there a lot of effort to that? And were you communicating it as well, that it's safe to come, not because the vaccine is safe only, but as well that the whole process is safe from the, in terms of COVID? What we did is we, all the people who got vaccinated, th there were two um, unplanned events, but aside of these two events, all the people got pre-scheduled appointments. So we knew how many people are going to come today and how many stations are needed to be ready for them. 
and we scheduled appointments in about six minutes for each patient. This is what it should take if everything is digitalized. It should take about six minutes per patient. And we did like, um, like a flow, entrance here, exit here. You don't meet the patient face to face. He handles from here, he goes to the station and then he continues to this direction. And we have a special waiting area and we have a sp after the vaccination and also prior to vaccination. But you will not see waiting lines outside our compound because we did also one trick. Like if the, in the compound there are 10 stations, I scheduled the appointment only for nine stations. So I always had one station to cut the line if there were too many people waiting. I could take more people than, than were coming. So you will not find lines, waiting lines in our compound. And did you have the situation where people would not come and the compound would stand empty for several hours, let's say? As I said, at the first weeks until last week, actually, we had just 1% of no-show, just 1% of no-show, which is practically zero. And since we had some people who came without scheduling, like a very old man comes with his um, caregiver. So we are instructed to vaccinate the caregiver as well. So he is not in the scheduling. So we were flexible regarding this. And uh, in case if, let's say, you have leftovers of Pfizer, which is already diluted and ready to be given, and let's say it's the end of session and you don't have anybody in line, did you use anything funny or innovative or something just to give this vaccine to somebody and what um, it was? There were a few cases like this, but at the end of the day, we are starting to close part of the stations in each compound. So if we have 10 stations, you will not open 10 new bottles. You will say to stations one to five close and you open bottles just to six to 10. And you are carefully managing it. So we had some cases that at the end of the day, we had like three, four units that we could give. So yes, you go out from the compound and you ask people, what is your age? And we start from the highest ages and going down and we vaccinate people. Another thing that we can do is we are not diluting until we need to use the bottle. So once we get the bottle to our compound, we have four days to use it. Once we dilute it, we have six hours to use it. One of our tricks was that we get the bottle for four days, but we uh, inviting people for three days. So even if some of them will not come, we will still have the fourth day and we will not need to throw away uh, bottles. Uh, tell me uh, with regard to healthcare workers again, because I'm asking so many questions because we in Ukraine will start with healthcare workers, hopefully soon. Um, so I'm asking more questions about this for the moment. Uh, were they vaccinated at their working stations or it's just automatically happened because each hospital had a station for vaccination. So they would just come together with other people to the same station, which is located there anyway. So. The hospital workers, uh, most of them did the vaccination in the hospital, but the majority of the health workers are not in hospital. They are in, um, in the HMOs, in the health providers. And we, I got the vaccination in a compound like any other Maccabi member. So we didn't do special vaccination in, uh, in our headquarters or something like that. I needed to schedule an appointment and come and get vaccinated like any other member. 
Um, tell me this um, vaccination in the hospitals. Uh, was it just for healthcare providers who are working in this hospital or any hospital as well had the station for vaccination of other people as well? In the first days, they were allowed to vaccinate general public and it was a mess and the ministry stopped it at once. It was a mess because the hospital is not connected to our digital systems and because he wanted to be attractive for young people. So we vaccinated also people who are not eligible for the vaccination. They were not at the first stages because at the first week we vaccinated only uh, people with the age of 60 and above. But the hospital wanted to be attractive, so we vaccinated also much younger people, which is not good. Um, so it was not happening mainly in the hospitals, but just in the separately organized uh, stations and in the hospitals only for the healthcare workers, right? I would say that uh, less than uh, 5% were done in hospitals. Mm -hmm. And did, did you organize drive-in as well? And how yeah, did I showed it, it on the and video. And which percent, which percent went on the drive-in and which percent was out of drive-in? Um, I would say that we have from our members about, because it, it's, it, the location is just in one place in Israel, um, I would say that six to 7% of our members get vaccinated in this, in this compound, in this drive-in. But it's, um, it's a bit of a logistics issue, but I must say that the people were amazed by it. And since Ukraine is much colder country than Israel, then maybe drive-in is a very good solution because people can stay in their car, can wait in their car, and you don't need to put them inside a hole just for a waiting room. Maybe it's a good option. Uh, how, how did you organize it for healthcare workers to put uh, all the information uh, after the patient was vaccinated? Uh, was it a special registrator or the nurse put it in? Was it a tablet? Did they travel with the computers? Uh, how difficult it was in general, whether it was enough internet flow for that, for example. So how did you organize all this part? Yeah. Uh, it's very important. The documentation, the documentation is very important. And each nurse has a laptop or desktop computer or uh, some kind of an iPad. And, or, or even uh, just a cellular phone. They have a special app that they document everything, as I said, uh, name, ID number, date of birth, in which uh, shoulder did the vaccination was given. There is a short questionnaire that we ask each patient, did you get flu vaccination in the last 14 days? Because if you got it, you cannot get the COVID vaccination, et cetera, et cetera. And also the number of the bottle. And then uh, he signs that he did the vaccination and the patient can go. Was it difficult? Was it easy for them? Very easy. It's it's like um, it's not a sophisticated app. So you didn't you didn't have to hire additional people for registration of the data. No, it was done by the nurse at the point. In Israel, it is not uh, it is forbidden for someone else to document a, a, a medical procedure. The medical staff needs to document what he did. Mm hmm. Uh, this uh, app was created particularly for the COVID immunization or they mm -hmm. used the just generally uh, general app which they used before? No, this one was developed directly for the COVID. How long did it took you to develop the new app? I would Is say a few weeks. So you just knew that the campaign will be there and the creation of this app was in the overall general plan on how to accompany yes. this uh, intervention. Yes, we started planning. We had like a um, written plan a few weeks before it started. Now, there were some things that we 
didn't think about. And for example? We, for example, we opened the opportunity to register for the vaccination, to schedule an appointment. It was done on Thursday afternoon and it took a few seconds and all our systems just collapsed. <laughs> our website, our telephone mechanism, everything just collapsed. The app was stuck because we had a demand of hundreds of thousands of people in a few minutes. And we didn't anticipate that. We thought that we are going to have the other way, uh, the, the, the opposite problem. We thought that the main event or the main challenge will be to encourage people to promote the vaccination. We didn't think that the problem will be too much demand. Uh, tell me with regard to the um, concerns on a potential anaphylactic shock or any strong allergic reactions. How did you communicate to the public on that? Uh, how long did they have to wait after immunization and where they waited if it was drive-in or not drive-in? And mm -hmm. did you specifically train the staff again for that? Or you just were hoping that the staff can do it anyway without problem? Or you had uh, some special brigade at each station of paramedics or anybody else to be prepared to assist during the anaphylactic shock? Mm -hmm. So first of all, in each nurse station, on the table, there are of course the vaccinations and syringes, but there is also an envelope with adrenaline um, that is ready to use. In pre-filled syringes, correct? Sorry? In pre-filled syringes already, Yeah, yeah, correct? of course, of course. The, the adrenaline is, is ready to use. Mm -hmm. um, and in each compound, there is also like a, a respiratory, um, set and you can do um, all the emergency procedures that are needed. So even and if you have to intubate the person, you are all ready to intubate in this setting if it will yes. be needed, correct? Yes. And in each compound, there is uh, like a senior nurse that is very well trained in, uh, in doing all the emergency protocol. And also we, like we told the emergency ambulance services, we told them in advance, where are we going to have compounds? So once we call them, we don't need to try and explain. We just say it's in this compound and they will know where it is. And happily, we didn't have any severe case of uh, bad reaction. We had few mild cases. I think that, and there is a protocol, part of the protocol with severe cases is to send them to hospital. I think that we sent, let's say 10 people or maybe 20 people from the one, over 1 million people that Maccabi vaccinated. Mm -hmm. With regard to other, um, if we uh, continue with the risk groups, um, um, you started with which group? What was the first risk group? From which age? 60 and above. So you just started at one at once for, from 60 and above. You didn't start from 80 and above and then 70 and above, just 60 and above, uh, basta, and everybody goes to, to the vaccination. To vaccination. Yes, but, but there are two other groups as well. First of all, medical staff. So there, there were actually uh, three groups, medical staff, 60 and above, and people with uh, suppressed immuniza immunization system or oncology patients. Of any age, correct? Of any age, above 16. Um, the oncology patients also above 60 or any age oncology above patients? 16, above 16, above 16. Above 16, okay, yeah. okay. So with regard to the messaging uh, for the people above 60, uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, did you use different messaging for different groups? Because people above 60 are very different. I mean, and they have totally different lifestyle and understanding of what's going on and the uh, desires to understand what's going on in different um, details, or it didn't matter in the communication strategy. Because a person mm -hmm. 90 plus a difference in his lifestyle and watches different channels probably than the person 65, for example. At the first days and even the first two weeks, we really uh, had such a great demand. So the messaging was not the point. The messaging was mainly about, please schedule an appointment. Don't, don't just come. Um, so that, that wasn't the problem. Now we are starting to deal with the 50 and above who didn't get vaccinated yet. We, we really want to vaccinate 90% out of this group of 50 and above. And we are trying to reach them from many directions. Talk to them directly, talk to the doctor that will talk to them, talk to the kids that will talk to them. And we are also, mainly we are doing two uh, families of messaging. The first one is the emotional one. The second is the logic and information one. In the uh, psychological one, we are talking about carrots and sticks. If you will get vaccinated, this is what will happen to you, the good thing. If you will not, this is what will happen to you, the bad things. And we are using a lot of testimonial. People who didn't get vaccinated, look what happened to me etc. We are talking about in at the end of March, there will be the Jewish feast of Pascha. And at the beginning of April, there will be at the beginning and in the middle of April, there will be the Orthodox and the Catholic Pascha. And at the middle of April, there will be the Ramadan for the Muslims. So we are using these dates to tell them, look, if you want to have this feast, to have this holiday with your family, then you have get to get vaccinated now, three weeks later, the second dose, and then you will have about 20 days after the second dose to, to get your uh, immuniza immunization system. Uh, and celebrate food. Easter. And celebrate Easter and everything. So it, it's yeah. good for the Jewish, for the Muslims, and for the Christians. Um, we have lots of nice words from people who are watching this um, air, and we have one question, uh, very practical, from Nadia Bodnar, who is asking how many uh, vaccinations did one nurse uh, did during the campaign, or does during the campaign mm. at one station? Um, it's around nine to ten vaccinations per hour each nurse and we are trying not to go over eight hours but at the For first one nurse, day correct one nurse do nine to ten vaccination per hour and works eight hours in a row right yes but we are trying at the first days we needed much more than eight hours um so we tried to to as i said we scheduled the appointments not for the whole nurses in the compound. There mm -hmm. was always one left free. So they could do some exchange in the ship in the in the shifts. So for coffee and everything, correct? Yes. So they can go eat something. Yes. Uh, and uh, tell me please, the station in general is open or this compound is open from which hour to which hour? It depends, but we can start at seven and to end at seven or to end at eight or nine. It depends on us and on the demand. But remember again, it's not like a shop. You need mm -hmm. to pre-schedule that the you're coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we can decide if it will be seven or eight or nine. Um, uh, and tell me, did you pay additionally to the nurses to work in those compounds or it was a part of their routine job with routine, routine salary? 
First of all, we recruited a lot of new nurses for this campaign because our nurses needs to continue what they are doing routinely. Uh, but how could disease. you recruit in a small country relatively? Uh, how, where did you take nurses from? Um, we, there, there are some, in, first of all, it's not just nurses, it's also medics that are allowed to do the vaccination. You so, mean paramedics? Paramedics, yes. Mm -hmm. um, from different levels of being a paramedic, not just the highest one. Um, and the army, the, the Israeli IDF provided us, provided us some of his paramedics and there are a few um, volunteer emergency organizations in Israel, mainly from the Orthodox uh, community. And they helped us as well. So we have like in Maccabi, there are, if I remember correctly, in routine days, something like 1,000 nurses, now we have 2.5 thousand nurses, more than doubled our staff. In, uh, in which period of time? Uh, we started before, like two, three, four weeks before starting the vaccination, because we needed to train them a bit. And I think we just stopped a week ago because even if you recruited some someone, maybe he will say that he doesn't want it. Maybe you understand you need to open more compounds like we did. Look, when we started, when we planned it, we figured that we will vaccinate 25,000 patients per day. After the second day, we understood that we can vaccinate 50,000 per day, double the number that we planned. And actually, we know to vaccinate 60,000 people per day, more than double, more than double. So we need a lot of stuff and we opened many more compounds than we planned because we understood that there is a demand and we want to uh, meet the demand. How many compounds in general are in Israel for the moment? Uh, above 400 above 400 yeah um okay we are in this um air already for one hour uh, tell me how many minutes do you still have for the questions and i will choose the question um i, I don't look at my iphone but <laughs> there is a waiting line now um so go ahead five? yeah okay five, so let's, ten, let's use five important. more minutes uh, okay, so the question is uh, from Tatiana Petrovskaya, whether you used the private sector or the private sector is not so big in Israel. I mean, from the hospitals of private sector, use their there, stuff. There isn't much of a public, of a private sector in the health system. It's uh, only for special surgeries or things like that. Um, it was done by the, by the health providers, which are all public. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one more question, the last one from me. Uh, what was the overall strategy with regard to pol politicians, parliamentarians and the authorities? Uh, did they have to wait uh, if they are not the medical risk group or you started with them to show other people that it's safe and because there is totally different strategies in different countries for that. Uh, somebody was accused of corruption, for example, to be vaccinated in the first line if they are not healthcare worker or are not from the um, risk group. In some other countries, politicians were the first one to get vaccinated because they belong to the risk group by age, for example and others were using politicians as a frontliners to show that it's safe. So what was the Israeli strategy in that? The Israeli instruction was to vaccinate by the risk groups, by the ages. Uh, and, and we follow this rule. Other organizations did not follow it totally. It took a few weeks and then they let us also vaccinate ministers uh, and then also parliament members, but it's 
At the beginning, it was very clear that only people above 60. If the politician is above 60, then okay. But if it's under 60, then not. Also, many TV anchors approached me, please vaccinate me. And I had to stand very uh, firmly and not allowing it, of course. And you have enough vaccines to proceed now in Israel? Yes, we really want some more. Um, but now we had some uh, slowdown with the demand, but only mild slowdown. Like last week was the third of the highest demand since we started, which is about around nine weeks. So the slowdown is not that big issue, but we see next week's supply and there, there's going to be a, a shortage. We want, we are and you are more. using Pfizer and Moderna or only Pfizer for the moment? For now, just Pfizer. Just Pfizer. Yeah. Uh, uh, so thank you so much. We've been a little bit more than, hour, than one hour um, here in this Facebook air. Uh, and um, I will let you go till Thursday. And then okay. we will be back on Thursday. So thank you very much indeed. Toda raba. Toda raba. Thank um, you. Всем, кто нас слушал, спасибо большое за то, что вы нас слушали. Everyone really who's connected in, thank you very much for listening to us and for yes, thank you uh, on our live next uh, stay together with Hebrew because we've got a whole lot more pending questions to ask him and those of the colleagues. So I happen to attend that this afternoon, but didn't tend to do so next Thursday. Please ask them to, to watch this uh, airing. So it's not really to, to repeat those questions, but we've got still, still more, many more questions ahead of us that we haven't covered this afternoon. And this access will be available both in, in uh, 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 English and Ukrainian. Thank you, Oleg. Let's thank you for the translation. And those of you who will be able to speak in English will be able to do so. So, in my own turn, I will ask Ido to send in the slides to us both in uh, English and those who translate in Ukrainian that you have done, because I think that uh, they will be eager really to see it. So, what it looks like in the pictures. So please stay tuned with our uh, airings on uh, Facebook for UNICEF and uh, Dr. Bulavin of our YouTube channel and UNICEF YouTube channel. So it's really to have an announcement. So at exactly what time we'll be airing Edo next Thursday and to be able really to keep abreast of this uh, airing and transmission also in English language for those of you who appreciate the uh, regional English. So please uh, put your thumbs up. So those of you who have appreciated it, so two or three thumbs up, pluses or minuses. So for us really to understand what you found, it, uh, it's helpful. Everyone enjoy a good day, good wintry day, and see you soon.